What if I told you that someone could travel into the future and come back younger than their twin who stayed on Earth? It sounds like science fiction, but it's a real consequence of how time works according to Einstein. Prepare to have your mind bent by the twin paradox, a thought experiment that reveals the truly bizarre nature of time itself. Imagine a twin returning from a space journey, visibly younger than their sibling who stayed on Earth. How is this possible? This isn't a trick of perception or a metaphor. It's a direct, albeit counterintuitive, outcome of the laws of physics. At the heart of this mind-bending scenario lies the twin paradox. It posits a simple setup. Two identical twins, let's call them Alice and Bob. Alice, the intrepid astronaut, embarks on a journey through space at speeds approaching that of light. Bob, the steadfast Earthweller remains behind, living out his life on our familiar blue planet. The paradox arises when Alice returns, for she will find herself younger than Bob, despite having experienced what felt like a normal passage of time from her perspective. This thought experiment challenges our most fundamental ingrained understanding of time. We perceive time as a universal, unyielding constant, ticking away uniformly for everyone, everywhere. The twin paradox, however, suggests otherwise, hinting at a reality where time is far more fluid and relative than we could ever imagine. It forces us to confront the bizarre nature of space-time itself, a concept born from Albert Einstein's groundbreaking theories, special relativity's time dilation. To truly grasp the enigma of the twin paradox, we must first lay the groundwork with Albert Einstein's revolutionary theory of special relativity, published in 1905. Before Einstein, the universe was largely viewed through the lens of Newtonian physics, where space and time were absolute and independent entities. Newton's universe was a grand, unchanging stage upon which events unfolded, with time flowing uniformly for all observers. Einstein shattered this classical notion with two deceptively simple, yet profoundly impactful postulates. The first postulate, the principle of relativity, states that the laws of physics are the same for all observers in uniform motion relative to one another. This means that if you are in a smoothly moving train, without any bumps or turns, you cannot perform any experiment within the train to determine if you are moving or standing still. The laws of physics, whether you're playing billiards or dropping a ball, will behave identically. This concept, while seemingly straightforward, has deep implications for how we perceive motion and reference frames. However, it is Einstein's second postulate that truly underpins the twin paradox and reshapes our understanding of the cosmos. The speed of light in a vacuum is the same for all inertial observers, regardless of the motion of the light source or the observer. This is a radical departure from our everyday experience. Imagine throwing a baseball from a moving car. To an observer on the ground, the baseball's speed would be the speed of your throw plus the speed of the car. But light doesn't behave this way. Whether you're standing still or hurtling through space at incredible velocity, a beam of light will always appear to travel at precisely 299,792,458 meters per second. This cosmic speed limit, denoted as c, is an invariant constant of the universe. This unwavering constancy of the speed of light leads directly to one of special relativity's most astonishing consequences, time dilation. If the speed of light is always the same for everyone, something else must give way to accommodate this fact that something else is time itself. Time, it turns out, is not an absolute, universal ticker. Instead, it is relative, its passage dependent on the observer's motion. Specifically, for an object moving at a high speed relative to an observer, time will appear to pass more slowly for that moving object from the observer's perspective. To visualize this, consider a thought experiment involving a light clock. Imagine a clock that measures time by a pulse of light bouncing between two parallel mirrors. Each tick of the clock occurs when the light pulse completes one round trip, from the bottom mirror to the top and back again. If this light clock is stationary relative to you, you observe the light pulse traveling a direct vertical path between the mirrors. Now, imagine this same light clock is placed on a spaceship moving at a very high, constant velocity relative to you. From your stationary perspective, the light pulse inside the moving clock still has to travel from one mirror to the other. However, because the clock itself is moving horizontally, the light pulse must travel a longer diagonal path to reach the opposite mirror and return, since the speed of light is constant for all observers, Einstein's second postulate, and the light in the moving clock has to cover a greater distance, it must take more time to complete one tick from your perspective. Therefore the moving light clock appears to tick slower than a stationary one. This is time dilation in action. Time literally slows down for the moving object relative to the stationary observer. This isn't just an optical illusion, it's a fundamental property of space-time. If there were an astronaut on that spaceship with the light clock, their biological processes, their heartbeat, their thoughts, their aging, would also slow down by the same factor. From their perspective inside the spaceship, everything would seem normal. Their light clock would tick at its usual rate, and they would age at their usual pace. It's only when compared to an external stationary observer that the difference in time's passage becomes apparent. This concept, while initially challenging to intuition, 
is the bedrock upon which the twin paradox is built. The paradox's heartbeat, with the principles of special relativity and time dilation firmly in mind, we can now delve into the core of the twin paradox. The setup is simple. Alice, the astronaut, leaves Earth in her high-speed spacecraft, while Bob, her twin, remains on Earth. According to time dilation, as Alice travels at near light speed, time should slow down for her relative to Bob. So, when she returns, she should be younger. This seems straightforward enough. But here's where the paradox truly begins to beat. Why isn't the situation symmetrical? If motion is relative, could you and Alice argue that she was stationary and Earth with Bob on it, was moving away from her at high speed? If that were the case, then from Alice's perspective, Bob should be the one aging slower. This is the crux of the apparent paradox. If both twins observe the other S clock running slower, how can one truly be younger than the other upon reunion? This seemingly symmetrical observation is what makes the twin paradox so perplexing and counterintuitive to our everyday understanding of relative motion. The resolution lies in a crucial asymmetry that breaks this apparent symmetry. Acceleration While special relativity deals with inertial non-accelerating frames of reference, Alice's journey is not entirely inertial. For Alice to leave Earth, turn around in deep space, and return to Earth, she must undergo acceleration and deceleration. Bob, on the other hand, remains in a single largely inertial frame of reference on Earth, ignoring Earth's orbital and rotational motion, which are negligible for this thought experiment. This acceleration is the key. When Alice accelerates, she experiences forces that Bob does not. Her frame of reference is not equivalent to Bob's throughout the entire journey. During the periods of acceleration and deceleration, Alice is no longer in an inertial frame. This change in her state of motion means that she switches between different inertial frames, and it is this switching that fundamentally breaks the symmetry of the situation. It's not just about relative velocity. It's about who experiences acceleration. To further illustrate this, physicists often use Minkowski space-time diagrams. These diagrams plot time on one axis and space on another, allowing us to visualize the world lines of objects, their paths through space-time. In such a diagram, Bob's world line would be a straight line extending vertically up the time axis, representing his stationary position in space, but constant progression through time. Alice's world line, however, would be a more complex path, a diagonal line moving away from Earth representing her outward journey, a curve or sharp turn representing her turnaround and acceleration, and then another diagonal line returning to Earth. The length of these world lines when measured in space-time corresponds to the proper time experienced by each twin, and it is the curved non-inertial segments of Alice's world line that are shorter in space-time length, indicating less proper time experienced by her. This visual representation clearly shows the inherent asymmetry in their journeys, even if their relative speeds are momentarily symmetrical. The paradox, therefore, is not a true contradiction of physics but rather a misapplication of special relativity to a scenario that requires consideration of acceleration and changes in inertial frames. Resolving the cosmic riddle, the resolution of the twin paradox, as hinted at, lies in understanding the crucial role of acceleration and the concept of different inertial frames of reference. While special relativity applies to observers in uniform motion inertial frames, the traveling twin, Alice, is not always in an inertial frame. Her journey involves three distinct phases. Acceleration, away from Earth. A period of constant velocity which can be considered inertial. Deceleration to turn around. Acceleration back towards Earth. And finally, deceleration to land. It is during the periods of acceleration and deceleration that her frame of reference changes. And this is what breaks the symmetry. Consider the moment Alice turns around. From her perspective, she experiences a significant gravitational-like force due to her acceleration. Bob, on Earth, experiences no such force beyond Earth's gravity, which is constant. This physical distinction means their experiences are not symmetrical. During Alice's turnaround, she effectively switches from one inertial frame, moving away from Earth, to another moving towards Earth. This change in her state of motion means that she is not simply observing Bob S. Clock from a different perspective, she is undergoing a fundamental change in her own space-time path. General relativity, Einstein's later theory, provides an even deeper understanding of this. While special relativity deals with gravity as a force, general relativity describes gravity as a curvature of space-time. Acceleration, in general relativity, is locally indistinguishable from gravity. So, when Alice accelerates, it's as if she's in a gravitational field. And time runs differently in gravitational fields, gravitational time dilation while special relativity is sufficient to explain the twin paradox. General relativity offers a more complete picture of why acceleration is the key. The resolution can also be understood by considering the cumulative effect of time dilation. From Bob's perspective, Alice's clock runs slow for the entire duration of her journey. From Alice's perspective, during her outward and inward inertial legs, she observes Bob's clock running slow. However, during her turnaround, there's a period where she rapidly changes her velocity. 
During this period, due to the effects of acceleration, she observes Bob's clock speeding up significantly, more than compensating for the time lost during the inertial parts of the journey. The net effect is that when they reunite, Bob has indeed aged more. This isn't just theoretical speculation. The predictions of time dilation, and by extension the resolution of the twin paradox, have been rigorously tested and confirmed by numerous experiments. One of the most famous is the Hafelkeating experiment in 1971, where atomic clocks were flown around the world on commercial airliners. When compared to a stationary atomic clock on the ground, the clocks on the planes showed tiny but measurable differences in time, precisely as predicted by both special and general relativity. Special relativity for the velocity effect and general relativity for the gravitational effect due to altitude. More recently, the global positioning system GPS relies heavily on relativistic corrections. GPS satellites orbit Earth at high speeds and at a significant altitude, meaning they experience both special relativistic time dilation due to their speed and general relativistic time dilation due to weaker gravity. Without accounting for these relativistic effects, GPS systems would accumulate errors of several kilometers per day, rendering them useless. The fact that your smartphone can pinpoint your location with remarkable accuracy is a testament to the reality of time dilation. The practical implications of the twin paradox extend far beyond theoretical physics, for future deep space missions, especially those involving interstellar travel, the effects of time dilation will be a very real concern. Astronauts traveling at a significant fraction of the speed of light would age slower than their counterparts on Earth. This means that while only a few years might pass for the astronauts on their journey, decades or even centuries could elapse on Earth. The concept of intergenerational space travel, where a crew might return to an Earth populated by their distant descendants, becomes a scientific possibility rather than mere science fiction. This has profound implications for mission planning, crew selection, and even the psychological well-being of astronauts. Beyond the paradox, a glimpse into the future, the twin paradox, far from being a mere intellectual curiosity, fundamentally alters our perception of time. For centuries, time was considered an absolute, universal constant, flowing uniformly and independently of any observer. Newton's clock ticked at the same rate for everyone, everywhere. Einstein, however, revealed time to be a dynamic, flexible dimension, inextricably linked with space to form a unified fabric called space-time. The twin paradox vividly illustrates this interconnectedness, demonstrating that the rate at which time passes is not fixed but depends on an observer's relative motion and gravitational environment. This shift in understanding has profound philosophical implications, challenging our intuitive notions of simultaneity in the very nature of reality. It suggests that there isn't one universal now but rather a multitude of nows each relative to a particular frame of reference. This relativistic view of time encourages us to move beyond a linear, absolute understanding and embrace a more complex, interwoven cosmic tapestry. As humanity ventures further into the cosmos, the implications of the twin paradox will become increasingly tangible. Imagine the first interstellar missions, where spacecraft might reach speeds that cause significant time dilation. A journey to a nearby star system, which might take decades from the perspective of Earth, could pass in mere years for the astronauts on board. This means that upon their return, they would find an Earth that has aged considerably more than they have. Family and friends would be older, perhaps even gone, and society would have evolved in ways they could scarcely imagine. This presents unique challenges for long-duration space travel, including the psychological impact of returning to a vastly different world and the need for new social and legal frameworks to accommodate such temporal discrepancies. The concept of future shock takes on an entirely new dimension when one literally travels into the future relative to their home planet. Furthermore, the twin paradox, and the broader theory of relativity, open doors to even more speculative, yet scientifically grounded, possibilities. Could we one day harness time dilation for practical purposes, perhaps for faster-than-light travel, though this remains highly theoretical and faces significant hurdles? or for creating isolated temporal environments, while such ideas remain firmly in the realm of science fiction for now. The fundamental principles that underpin the twin paradox continue to inspire and challenge physicists, pushing the boundaries of our understanding of the universe. The journey into space-time's ajoled mystery is far from over. The twin paradox serves as a powerful reminder that our universe is far stranger and more wondrous than our everyday experiences suggest. It invites us to question our assumptions, to embrace the counterintuitive, and to marvel at the elegant yet bizarre laws that govern reality, as we continue to explore the cosmos, both through theoretical inquiry and technological advancement, we will undoubtedly uncover even more profound secrets about time, space, and our place within the grand cosmic dance. So, take a moment to ponder, what other mysteries does space-time hold? How will our understanding of time continue to evolve as we push the boundaries of exploration? The answers, like time itself, are constantly unfolding, waiting to be discovered.